Congratulations, you've made it through the VA loan qualifications video, home requirements video, and the VA loan financing videos, which, while very important, are not necessarily as exciting as this video is going to be. Be sure you watch this entire video because towards the end, I'm going to tell the story of my $10,000 VA loan mistake. Now, let's talk about why you should use the VA loan. There are so many benefits to the VA loan, but these are some of my favorites. Number one, of course, is that it requires no money out of pocket. The number one excuse that I hear from real estate investors is that I don't have enough money to get started. So the VA loan completely eradicates that excuse because you can get away with 100% financing, which means zero money out of pocket. Now, this is great for investors, but it's also very good for just your normal primary residence home buyer because depending on your market, 20% down could be a lot of money. And the FHA loan, which is only 3.5% down, has some other drawbacks that we'll cover in a minute. I want you to think about this for a minute if you use this for an investment property. Try to imagine the return on investment from zero dollars down. You can't, it's infinite. Literally no way to calculate the return on even one dollar back if you put zero into the property. The next is VA house hacking, which is basically taking the first point and then making it even more effective. The VA loan allows you to purchase up to four units. There's actually a way to purchase more than that. We covered it in an earlier video. I'm gonna bring you a much more detailed analysis of that later, but generally speaking, up to four units. So imagine you buy a fourplex or even a duplex and you rent out all the vacant units and you live in one and it pays for your mortgage. Theoretically, this means that your tenants could pay 100% of your living expenses, as in your mortgage, utilities, whatever. Wait, does that mean I could buy a house with no money out of pocket and then live in it for free while I'm building equity and I own the house? Yeah. Ah, that's too good to be true. There's no way that's true. Yeah, you're right. It, it is too good to be true, and it does sound too good to be true, but it is a realistic possibility. And that's why this loan is so powerful. And you, you've got to do your research and you should definitely look into using it. Another great benefit behind the VA loan is the 100% refinance option. Most banks will let you pull cash out and refinance up to 70 or 80% of the value of the home. Meaning if you own a $100,000 home, you could pull up to 70 or $80,000 out of that property. So if you owe 50 and you pull 80, you could pull $30,000 in cash. Oh, I didn't lose you there the VA will let you refinance up to 100%. So if you own a $100,000 home, you owe 50 grand on it, you could pull $50,000 cash, like write a check to your bank account and still own the home. That's a pretty unique opportunity. Imagine conducting a live-in burr, which is the buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat strategy, a live-in burr where you put zero money into the renovation and then you're able to pull 100% out and it may still cash flow or pay for your living expenses. I mean, that is, that's impressive. You could get paid to own a home that you live in for free. Pretty cool strategy. But as always, make sure you run your numbers. One of the biggest misconceptions with the VA loan is that it can only be used once and that, that's just false. Now there are some stipulations, but you can reuse the VA loan. In fact, that's kind of what screwed me and the story we'll tell in a minute. The VA loan allows you to buy a property and then live in it, you have to intend to live in it for a year. But let's say your job relocates you more than 50 miles away. Well, now you can move out and live in another home and you can use the VA loan again. And you can keep doing this until you've maxed out the maximum allowable amount uh, VA loan, depending on your area. So, you know, 400,000, 700,000, depends on your area. And then, you know, you pay 25% down over that, which is just really cool, but you can keep using it. And then if you've maxed that out and you can't reuse it, you can refinance into a conventional loan with one of the houses you already own or sell one of the houses you already own and it just kind of recycles and you can now reuse the VA loan again. But the real benefits behind the VA loan are the safeguards in place to ensure you're taken care of and, and your family is taken care of. The VA loan offers a level of comfort that a lot of loans don't, even though it might be 100% financed. One of the complaints a lot of people have is the strenuous inspection and appraisal periods for the VA loan, but the reality is once you get past that and you purchase the home, that's a really good thing because it means you know every minute detail of everything that's wrong with the property. 
the odds are very, very slim that something will come back to bite you in the rear later on because you had a very thorough inspection period and the appraisers are very good. And so you know that there's a margin for error there that may not be the case if you use kind of cheapo non-vetted people to buy a, you know, a conventional loan. The Department of Veteran Affairs will actually go to bat to negotiate for you a little bit on foreclosures. Now, I am not advocating to fall behind on your mortgage payment, but if the worst of the worst happens, because the VA guarantees 25% of that loan, that's how you're able to get 0% financing, they don't wanna just lose their money, so they are gonna you know, be willing to help you negotiate, and if things go super south, they they have ways to still help you get out without a huge foreclosure on your record, short sale, stuff like that. And the Department of VA will actually help you with that, whereas most lending institutes are not so uh, kind per se. Another safeguard is the vetted professionals. So your lender, inspector, appraiser, contractor, the energy efficient people, and all these people that work with your home, they've all been vetted by the Department of Veteran Affairs. So they have some requirements for vetting to ensure that you have qualified people working with you. Now, obviously there are gonna be people who are better than others and there are gonna be some people who fall through the cracks, but the vast majority of people that would not be someone you wanna work with for lending or contracting are gonna be weeded out by this vetting process, either through the vetting process or just because there is a vetting process and they're like, ah, I don't wanna waste my time applying for that. So you have a much better talent pool to pull from, which means you're gonna get a better, better services and a better product, depending on what you're using. Another great safeguard is that the VA loan is actually assumable, which means that another veteran could come and just take over your payments. This is not necessarily the most ideal exit strategy, but let's say you buy a $500,000 house and because of commission for real estate agents and maybe some repairs, maybe the market didn't go up as much as you thought or you didn't live in it as long as you thought because you got orders. If you sell the house, you need to bring $10,000 to closing in order to break even, meaning that you would be kind of underwater and when you pay commission, you're going to be out 10 grand out of pocket. Not ideal, but it's a reality. I have a buddy out here going through that right now. What if you had another friend who had just gotten there and liked your house and they just assumed your mortgage, meaning that they just start making payments for you and they just take over your mortgage. They don't need the down payment. They're a VA lender, all that other stuff. You know, it's still a normal thing. You don't own the house anymore, but instead of losing $10,000 on a commission, you just walk away and they just take over your payments. And so it's kind of a win-win because if the appreciation happens or they make more debt pay down over the next three years, they're gonna be taken care of. Obviously they wanna do their numbers, but you're taken care of because now you're not bringing 10 grand to closing so you can put money into a new property. It's a very nice exit strategy when things have not gone the way that you would like them to have gone. The VA renovation loan is amazing. I'm not gonna waste a ton of time talking about it here, but just know that, and I'll link to the video below. I have a video on this. The VA renovation loan is huge. You can buy a house, even if it's tear down quality and renovate it completely and move into an effectively rehabbed and almost brand new home and still be zero down. And you can build equity by doing that. So the opportunities are endless here. And again, imagine if you do a 100% refinance later and now you've got all your money back out for this awesome property. So there's some cool strategies that you can use to utilize the renovation loan and the refinance loan to, I don't wanna say game the game, but to really, really leverage your benefit. But be careful when you're over leveraging. There are a few points that I mentioned in the earlier videos and again in the article that's down below, I'll link to it. However, they're good points, so I'm just gonna recap them very, very quickly. The first one is that there's no PMI, no private mortgage insurance. This saves me $81 a month, or rather it would, except I didn't use the VA loan. Again, that story is about to come up. The point being, I'm paying $81 a month that I shouldn't be because I didn't use the VA loan. The closing costs are comparable to any other loan that you would use. In fact, they're often a little better because lenders are friendly for veterans. Uh, and you can wrap all that in so you don't necessarily have to pay any of it anyway. So just know that closing costs are good, if not better, on the VA loan. And once again, the funding fee, which is the dreaded funding fee that nobody likes and everybody whines about, it's really not that bad and it can be wrapped into the loan. But if you're a 10% disabled veteran, that fee is waived for life. All right, this sounds way too good to be true. So David, there's gotta be a downside. Of course there's a downside. There's a downside to everything. The downside is not enough people know about the VA loan. Like the biggest problem I have with the VA loan is the amount of people who don't understand it. Now, 
I will say, and I'm gonna divert real briefly, if you over leverage the VA loan, it can be kind of dangerous. So just make sure that you understand the market you're getting into and as always, buy as an investment, not as just some property that you're only gonna live in for a couple of years. Like think ahead, run the numbers. As long as that works, the VA loan is just an amazing, amazing benefit. That was my really cheesy drum roll for myself. My horror story with the VA loan starts in 2015. I read a couple books. I decided that I was just gonna jump in, take action, and I was gonna buy a duplex. I probably could have bought a fourplex, but I was gonna buy a duplex. And for those of you who've listened, the numbers worked out at cash flows. I get a couple hundred bucks a month. It's really not a bad deal. Here's the problem. When I asked my realtor, who was awesome, about a VA lender, her lender did not necessarily specialize in VA loans, so she didn't really recommend it. So I went and what I did was I found a lender. I actually thought of someone who had been pushing radio ads. So kudos to those of you who use radio. It actually was, you know, it still works somewhat, at least it did in 2015. And they advertised that they specialized in the VA loan. So I went and talked to him and the guy seemed really nice and really friendly, but he told me, well, long story short, he talked me out of the VA loan. Basically what I got out of that was that I could only use it once. And he said I could use it other times, but he mentioned that it was just a very complex problem. And he focused on the fact that the funding fee went from 2.15% to 3.3%, meaning that it would be more expensive the second time and, and how complicated it was and all the stipulations. And he really kind of tried to downplay the VA loan. He basically talked me into not wasting my VA loan on that duplex, but waiting until I had a bigger property to purchase, which is all well and good, but an $80,000 duplex barely even makes a dent in my certificate of eligibility. So here I am listening, doing the thing, you know, whatever. I do the FHA loan, which is not terrible, but here's the problem is that I paid three and a half percent down, which again, not terrible, but because it was less than that 20% down, I'm required to pay private mortgage insurance, which it was a bummer. And like I mentioned before, that's $81 a month, which is just shy of $1,000 a year. So you figure I've owned this place for four years. So that's around $4,000 that I've paid in private mortgage insurance, which could have been cash flow into my pocket. And my closing costs and fees and down payment came out to just shy of another $4,000 when I originally bought the place. So in the last four years, that's $8,000 that I have spent either spent on the FHA loan or missed out on through PMI that would have been completely avoided and in my pocket had I used the VA loan. The really, really crappy icing on the cake is that the VA loan has a lower interest rate. And at the time it was like a quarter of a percentage lower interest rate, which adds up pretty quick over time. So over the last four years, I've probably lost about $10,000 just by not using the VA loan, which I would like to point out is more than my car payments and more than lattes would have been, and more than you know, most of those little petty things that people tell you to focus on with your budget, this cost me more than most of those things would have. And all it was was me trying to be ambitious and not having the right person to talk to. Again, this is a $10,000 mistake, roughly, and that's in a very affordable market. Imagine if that had been somewhere like San Diego, San Francisco, or Hawaii, where instead of an $80,000 duplex, it's a five, $600,000 property. I can't even, begin to imagine how much worse things would be. Moral of the story is, make sure you find a very solid VA lender and a realtor who works with a VA lender. The two, if you get quality lenders and realtors, can make your life so much easier. The problem is that we often go for the per first person we run into or the person we know, and unfortunately that might not be the best person to talk to. You need to shop around for lenders. You need to shop around for realtors. And really, you need to have someone there to help you out and hold your hand. Which is why, if you click the link below, I have actually set up a page on my website. You go in and plug in a little bit of information. It's like five or six questions. It asks you like, what your name is, what market you're looking to invest in, rough ballpark, how much you're thinking you might have to spend, uh, and, and timeline. Whether you're thinking maybe next month you need to buy a house, six months, a year, or you're just curious. And what I will do is I will take all of that information because it'll email me and I will go out of my way to hunt down two or three realtors that I think would be a very good fit. And obviously I will look through who their lender is and all that and as an agent I'll vet them to my best of my ability. And what this will do for you is it'll give you a couple people to talk to and to ask questions of and to get familiar with that I've at least taken a look at 
to see if I would use them. Now, I'm not saying that if I would use them, they are the best person in the world, but having been burned before, I know what not to look for, and I'm gonna make sure that you are taken care of. This is an absolutely free service, and what I will do is I will then put you in contact with them. And if you have questions for me throughout the process, I'm there to help you out. My goal through this is that whether you are buying a home or you are an investor, I'm able to help you have a smooth transition and a smooth process. And hopefully two or three years down the road, you'll be looking at me and going, man, what a great decision it was to use that VA alone. And then I'll go, whoo, high five. And we will smash that like button together because you found this video useful and have a great day guys. Once again, David Pere from Military to Millionaire. I'm just here to tell you my story and hopefully help some of you avoid all the mistakes that I've made. If I did that, let me know in the comments what you thought. Have a great day.